So in this video, you're gonna be learning how to overcome regret. I got my good friend, Clayton Elliott. What's up, brother? What's up, how man? you doing? Good, buddy. Good to be here. Hey, thanks for uh, dropping by. We're kind of doing the whole uh, Jerry Seinfeld thing, comedian in cars. Yeah. We're like uh, just two random people in cars. <laughs> we're not as cool as Jerry Seinfeld not yet. As, yet. Yet. Yet, yet, right? That's yet. Uh, and the uh, reason why I have Clayton over here is Clayton, for the last couple of years, has been studying uh, human psychology, has been studying regret, and has been studying fear a lot. And uh, him and I just had a cappuccino. We're talking about regret. I'm like, man, we got to make a video right, you know, right now. So why don't we first start off with the major question: Is what in the world is regret? Uh, regret is an emotion that we feel that it's a negative emotion. It's a fear-based emotion, and uh, it's everybody has an experience of it. Very few people have um, the awareness of why we feel it, where it comes from. Why is it so powerful in shaping our decisions and or lack thereof, you know, actions and lack thereof? And like I said, it ties back to fear. Fear is that other four letter F word that no one really wants to speak and utter because it's taboo. And, you know, we have all different words for it. Like, uh, you know, I'm stressed or I'm anxious or mm. I'm worried or I'm concerned. Really, they're just saying I'm scared. Mm. And uh, no one wants to admit that. But th how regret ties into that is humans, the, the part of your brain the fear center of your brain is the most primitive part of your brain. It is the bottom, lower, back part of your brain. It is the fight, flight, fight, flight, fight, or fright response. And how it ties into regret is humans are risk aversive. We don't want to do things and we'll be resistant to doing things and hesitate all the time in taking any action that might result in pain, um, discomfort, or loss of any kind. Um, so when you think, if you think it to yourself, what are the things that make you feel regret? What are the things you really want to do that you feel pulled towards, but there's this feeling of if I do this and it doesn't work, what am I out? What am I going to lose? How, how will I feel regret? So to really zero in and narrow in on regret, there's two specific uh, types of experience of regret. People, when I explain them to you, you'll understand, but most people are not unaware of the, the distinction and the very uh, important difference in how you experience it and how you can overcome it. So there's regrets of omission and regrets of commission, mm. regrets of regrettable action and regrettable inaction. The difference is I want to, let's say, make a video, post it on YouTube. I have something I want to share. I got you know, information that I think is gonna be of value to people. And so I have this idea, I wanna make a video. And there's two choices now. Either the regret that I'm feeling in the beginning, the anticipation of what if this doesn't work? What if no one likes it? What if I fail? What if they laugh at me? Mm -hmm. What if they criticize me? What if they mock me? All these feelings will make you feel, oh, well then I, I'm gonna regret doing this. I'm, I, I feel like I might regret doing this. There's, there's a fear that comes up. And so you don't do it. Down the road, you keep thinking to yourself, keeps coming up. Why didn't I do that video? I really want to do that video. I have something of value to share with people. Why am I not doing this video? Why am I avoiding this? Now you have regrettable inaction, a regret of omission, of something you've opted out of. And let's say I do the video and I actually make the video. And let's say people mock me and they hate the video and they laugh at me and they ridicule me. Now I'm sitting here in the aftermath of doing the video, feeling regret, feeling the regret of man, I wish I didn't do that video. You know, people didn't like it. People were laughing at me. Yeah. The difference is the regrettable action doesn't last long. The regret you feel after doing something, there's all the, I, I'll, I'll spare you the details. There's a whole long, a lot of research has been so put into like, this. it's more of a pain for the regret side of things for the, for the one, for the one that you take no action in. So let's say I have two scenarios. One is like, let me go build this business. Let me go put all my heart and soul into it. Let me sink all my money and like, fuck it, let's just do it. Yeah. You do what you feel, whatever. That regret will peak. After that peak, it drops down. Yeah. The, 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 it ahead. drops. However, let's say I do that again, but I don't take action. I don't actually go towards my dream. That regret stings more. It, it, it lasts longer. Yeah. And so the whole, the whole concept is, is the temporal perspective of confidence, meaning to some of that means, the closer you get to um, a, 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 an action, the moment of truth, yeah. where you gotta you know, act, you have lots of confidence. The closer you get to it, the confidence starts to diminish. You start to doubt, you start to hesitate, you start to resist. 
if you take action in that moment and you get the result you want, you're not gonna feel regret. You're gonna feel the, the bliss and the joy of success, of actually taking action and, and reaping the benefits of, of action. Mm. If that moment comes and you don't take it and you don't take action, the further you get away from that moment of truth when you could have acted, the more confident you're gonna start feeling again and the more regret you're gonna feel. It, it, it stays with you and it does not end. It only gets worse and worse and worse with time. Regrettable action, you do something, it doesn't work, you fail, you lose everything, it peaks right after that moment, but as time goes by, thanks to a number of cognitive processes, one, one being the silver lining effect. You take action, you fail, it doesn't work, you learn, you have an experience. Yeah. You're able to say, well I did it, it didn't work, but I learned this, 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 and this that I could not have known unless I took the action. Yep. So you find ways to turn a negative into a positive. And there's closure, there's an end result, and there's something you can actually point towards as this happened, it's not, it's not in your imagination. But when you don't take action, your imagination starts, well, what if I had done that? It could have worked. Imagine I had taken that action. I could have been rich and famous. I could be happy and successful. I could have all the things I've ever wanted in my life had I just taken action. Because there's no closure, and because you have no actual experience, your imagination will continue to play tricks with you. It will never stop. And in this research, to sum it all up, the people they interviewed, the hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people they interviewed, all the most painful regrets they had were not regrets of action. Yep. They were all regrets of inaction. In all the survey uh, participants, every one of them said, I wish I had tried this. I wish I had given I this a shot. I, I wish I could have, should have. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. Yeah, I wish that. I had tried. Yeah. And that's the only things they can remember are these things they really wanted to do that they didn't. These are the, these are the, the, the things that haunt them on their deathbed. These are the things that haunt them as they age and get older that they have to wrestle with but because they could have, they would have, they probably should have, but they didn't. <laughs> and the ones who, the, the, the things they did do that didn't work out for them, they don't even remember. Yeah. They don't even recall these things because... So what are, what are some like uh, simple things people can do on a day-to-day -day basis to kind of uh, overcome this whole, you know, it's kind of like paralysis by analysis dealing yeah. with regret. Yeah. You know, they're, they're frozen before they even act. Yeah. Little little steps. I always say, you know, it, it, so to do anything that where you might have regret, where you might encounter a really intense experience of regret. Yeah. Um, you need courage. The part, the the, the the part of your mind that's activating, that's that's being stimulated, that, that that's that's warning you to beware, to be cautious, is fear. Whenever you feel fear, you need to flex courage. Courage is a muscle. It's a mental muscle. It is developable. If you don't use it, you lose it though. Yep. And it is it is is not an emotional process. It is a a, a cognitive um, upper brain process overriding the lower brain. Lower brain says, "Be careful, danger, danger." The upper brain says, "No, nah, not actually real danger. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to lose a limb. I'm yeah. not going to be destitute on the street if I take this little action." So you can start with just little things, little 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 things that make you slightly feel feel a slight discomfort. And in doing that over and over, like going to the gym. If, I've, if I'm completely out of shape yeah. and I go to the gym, I'm not going to pick up the heaviest weights and lift them until I burn out. I'm going to be in so much pain afterwards in the healing, in the recovery process, that I might be deterred from going back and doing it again. Actually, Tony Robbins talks about that. The quickest way to actually get into a state of mind is physicality, right? Fast, uh, uh, Walking fast, try that trick. If you feel like... I don't have guts to do this or I have fear right now. Go outside, prop your chest like you have a strut, you know, you just, you're the shit and just walk fast. Instantaneously, you transform your hormonal landscape of your body yeah. and your psychology transforms like this. It's the body, mind, mind, body, you know, yeah. connection is that, you know, if, even if you're not thinking you feel like you can do it, you, you can put your body through actions that will make your mind start realizing. I always say challenge yourself every single day. You know, for example, something that I do is, I'm a righty big time, so I try to eat my food with a fork with my left hand. It, it's awkward, but I challenge myself. You know, I'm taking a new martial arts every year. This year I'm doing Krav Maga, or learning the piano, or going Toastmasters, or whatever it is. You're, you're doing something new, and yeah. even though you may not think uh, it's a challenge or that you may not fear it trust me psychologically all these processes are going down it's like okay how do i cope with this new new information yeah it's brand new information yeah. like how do i novelty it's a novelty how do i organize this uh, so i can become a master of it i think one of the biggest issues when it comes to regret or fear is i i personally believe people don't push themselves enough on a day-to-day -day basis yeah and I, I give it the mount everest analogy like you're looking at mount everest you're looking at the peak you're like I think the peak's called Capstone. You're looking at the top, you're like, oh fuck, that's a, that's a pretty high hike.
But if you actually break down uh, Everest into, say, I guess, what, p different peaks, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit by base bit. Base camp one, base, base camp, camp two, two ba base camp three. You get to one base camp, you acclimatize to yeah. the lack of oxygen, the new environment you're there, and your body gets used to it, you go back to the next level. That's right. And, 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 it's, and it's, it's gradual. You know, if, if you do too much at once, you're going to get knocked down if you've never done it before. But novelty, like like you said, eating with the left hand as opposed to the right. You know, however you go home from work, you have an ingredient, you have a, a, a route you go, take a different route. Take a different you route. drive, take the public transit. Yeah. You can start little things like that. And you think, oh, what if I get, if I take public transit and, 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 and I take a zip car today or I do an Uber today, like what could go wrong? You start convincing yourselves of all the things that go wrong, do it. And yeah. whatever goes wrong, likely nothing will go wrong. Or there's also a stoic. I, there's a very um, famous stoic practice that I do. Is I actually think of all the things that could go wrong. And then in my mind, I figure out ways to overcome those obstacles. So for example, you know, I'm about to invest five million. What could go wrong? I lose all my money. Okay, but what is my contingencies? What am I psychologically preparing myself for? So if that happens... I'm already there. I've been there, done that, I'm ready. And I give the example of Michael Phelps when he won, I think, like his 10th gold medal in the Olympics. Uh, he went in the pool right away, the chlorine went in his eyes and the glasses kind of fell off. He was blind, right? He kept on swimming and he, like, he got a world record and a gold medal and they're like, dude, like how the fuck did he do this? You know, you were pretty much blind. He's like, you guys don't understand. Like I already knew this is a possibility. I knew that the water can get in my eyes and my glasses can fall off. I actually swam this lap about 10,000 times in my head. I knew every square inch of that pool. Yeah. Right. So it's future framing yourself and already yeah. being in that moment of like, what if this happens? Fuck it. I already know what to do. Yeah. Like, like really, it's one question. I want to do this. I'm scared. Your body starts resisting. All these physical sensations come up, telling you to run the other way. Yeah. Really, t what's the worst that can happen? Imagine the worst thing that can happen on this new novel, unknown, unpredictable, uncertain new thing you're doing. And then ask yourself, if that happens, can I handle it? Yeah. Do, can I actually, if that worst case scenario happens, can I deal with it? Most of the time, it's a yes. If you really are honest with yourself, you will be able to handle whatever it is. And this is resilience training. This is, this is the, the most, they don't teach this in schools. No. They do not teach this in classrooms. And I tell you right now, education is failing millions and We're millions talking. and millions of people because they don't teach kids. Yeah. They don't teach them grow up saying, listen, you got this part of your brain. It's called an amygdala. It is your best friend and your worst enemy. It will keep you alive, but it will keep you in a cage, locked in a cell, if it thinks that's what's going to keep you safe. And you're, you have to override it Well, look at, at this. Times. One of the final uh, tests that Navy SEALs do is they'll stand, they'll look at the sunrise. I may be mistaken, but I heard this from another uh, Navy SEAL. And uh, one of the final tests is they're going to future frame themselves on the worst possible uh, uh, situations. And they put themselves in a really fucked up situation. They'll say, out of all the tests, the physicality test, other mental tests, that's the hardest of the Navy SEALs. Really? Yeah, because they really know how fucked up a situation can be. Yeah. Kidnap, this, that. Like, these guys are the elite, elite people in the world, man. Yeah. Like, stuff they do uh, boggles my mind. Yeah. Uh, but goes to show you, they understand future framing power. Yeah. They understand that the ones that do pass that test, whatever happens, these motherfuckers are prepared. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's and I think, it. I think that's a, I think this exercise can be done every day and it doesn't have to be like, you know, death and gloom situations, but it can be something so simple as like, uh, you know, you have a pitch, you want to pitch some investors and the investor said, no. Okay. So what? Just thank the guy in your mind, thank him and ask him point blank. This always tell advice to uh, entrepreneurs who want to pitch. Ask them why they said no. Yeah. Hey. What, what, what would make it a yes? Yeah. What would make it's it a no? Yes. I totally get it. But if I go back to the drawing board and I go to someone else, ask the question, yeah. what would have made this closer to a yes for you? Yeah. They'll yeah. tell you, go back to the drawing board, erase there, rewrite, go to the next guy. And like, that's it, man. if you don't do it and you never do it and you psych yourself up, the regret will haunt you yeah. for as long as you live and time does not wait for you and windows of opportunity, they're called windows of opportunity because they open, they close. Yeah. They're here and you keep moving forward and you pass it and it closes. And one day you will get to a point in your life where you'll look back on all the time you had, I'm speaking from experience, and you regret time wasted. Oh, and we, you, yeah, we waste a lot of time. A lot of time. And but, Clayton, but, Clayton and I know each other for fucking like twenty years. Yeah, and and yeah. And, 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 and you and you can get lost there, depending on how yeah. further down the path you are. But then you can stop and say, okay, I learned from those things. The things I did do that didn't work, I don't regret them. I learned from them. The only things I really truly regret are the things I didn't do. And moving forward, you know, really, really weigh where you're at right now. How happy you are there, mm. how fulfilled you are there, and if you're not, and you can honestly say to yourself, you're not, you will nothing will change unless you 
open your arms and hug regret, that feeling of regret, of take regret, regret, regrettable action. Yeah. Regrets are related to actions taken, you, they'll be your best friend. Yeah. Regrets related to inaction and avoidance will haunt you as long as you live and on your deathbed will be the loudest screams in your ears in your inner world and you will not be able to silence that's them. that's the definition of hell right there yeah there's no physical hell that's hell right there yeah. looking at a life that could have been lived fully that could have been lived courageously and when you're honest with yourself all you can really say is i lacked the courage to act in the moment and don't get me wrong like i said courage is a muscle it's developable yeah it never feels good and the bigger the more courage you get the more stronger your courage gets new level new devil a friend of mine says <laughs> and that, you know one. you get to another level and yeah. it's like that that fear is gonna uh, you're gonna encounter a new level and you know you keep upgrading but if you're not lifting you're not gonna be getting stronger so, so start lifting start wait lifting. man always a pleasure brother yeah, if people want to get more like info on who you are and what you do where they can find you man uh clayton elliott.com c-l-a-y-t-o-n-e-l-l-i-o-t-t.com it's under development right now, but you can go there and sign up for the email list and uh, be notified when the site launches. Cool. All right, guys, this is what I want you to do right now in the comment section below. Leave a comment about uh, your experiences with uh, regrets and fears and maybe you want to share some exercises that you have. Till then, have a great day. Adios. Peace.